Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins, and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today we are talking about chain plying. Whoop, whoop. This is a really cool way to three-ply yarn, and in my opinion, the only way to three-ply yarn, because I don't want to play with three bobbins, actually four, including the one you're spinning onto. That's a lot of bobbins. <laughs> All I can see in that reality is Bean getting tangled up in my yarn. <laughs> Lots of people do it though, but not me so far. Uh, probably in three years I'll make a great video about how my no longer toddler doesn't bother me when I three ply. But at this moment, chain playing is my jam. So, if you want to do chain plying, you've probably researched it, googled it, and you may have discovered that it's called Navajo plying. Or maybe you've only heard it called Navajo plying and you're like, what the heck is chain plying? Navajo plying or in plying is a common term. I'm not sure when it started to be called that because as far as I can tell through my research, it has nothing to do with the actual Navajo people or the Diné, if you are going for like their actual name. <laughs> so anyway, the Diné people, or the Navajo people, as they're commonly known, legally called. I'll leave an interesting article about how um, the Diné chose to be called the Diné, again, because it's actually the word for them in their native language, Diné. But the Navajo Tribal Council, or I'm not sure I remember the uh, official legal name of their tribe, they decided to keep it Navajo as to not confuse people about actual issues like access and uh, equality <laughs> and all of the things that are really causing trouble. Though I do think as the child of a linguist, uh, native language and choosing the name that comes from your language is important, as do many people. Anyway, I'm just an outsider looking in, but if you're curious, I did leave an article on that because I thought that was fascinating because I had never heard the term Diné until I started doing some research here. Anyway, that's a sidetrack. The Diné slash Navajo people have an intense, beautiful, like super varied and rich textile history. And there's lots of places you can research that. I left a link to some of the places that I did research. There's a book, there's a couple of blog posts, and there's some videos of people who are actually Navajo slash Dene doing the thing. And I could not find any evidence that chain plying is historically something that they did. I did not contact you know, curators or do extensive research, but as far as I could tell, it has nothing to do with the actual Navajo people. So, that being said, I'm going to call it chain plying until somebody informs me otherwise. If you have any information on this, I would be so delighted if you left me a comment or hopped onto Instagram where I'm more active and talked to me there. Let's have a conversation about the Navajo slash Dene involvement in chain plying. <laughs> I'm, I'm so curious. Anyway, so that being said, I'm gonna call it chain plying and I personally recommend you call it chain plying unless you find out that the Navajo slash Dene actually invented it. Otherwise, it's a bit weird slash janky to call it something that it's not. That being said, let's jump into the actual video now that I've waxed poetic about something that I am merely an outsider observing into. <laughs> Alright, so here we are at the wheel. I have my yarn wound off into a ball. And the first thing you want to do is make a loop like I'm showing here and slide it through your leader thread loop. So you have four pieces coming out. The end, the ball, and the loop. And then you just spin the plying direction until you get to the end of the loop and you pull the ball thread through the loop. So if you've ever done crochet chaining, it's just like that. Um, you're just chaining. You can pull a long loop. You can pull a short loop. Whatever works well for you. I find that if I use my middle fingers to pull it up, if you can see how I'm doing that, 
I have a flow. So you're gonna find a way to pull the loop through the, or I guess pull the thread through the loop pretty seamlessly as you go on. It's not rocket science and your body will find a pattern to it. Your non-dominant hand pretty much just holds it steady. See, now I'm pulling small loops. And this feels quicker, but I personally get an adrenaline rush, so I tend to overspin if I do this. <laughs> so when you get to the end, I just tie it off, but this yarn does tend to come undone if you don't set it. So I do recommend doing a simple setting process to just kind of let it do its thing or leave it on the bobbin for a while. That kind of lets it chill out as well. So those are my, my setting related tips. But otherwise, just follow your intuition, your intuition, and experiment with different hand positions and treadling speeds. You can do it from a bobbin off your Lazy Kate or from a ball, experiment with both, see what works for you, and follow your body's lead, not what somebody else is telling you is the best. <laughs> so I hope that really helps. I hope you enjoyed that video and you feel equipped to do a three ply because I know a lot of you are really intimidated like me about using multiple blob bloblins. I'm so intimidated with my bloblins. Three, four, four bloblins. I always forget that fourth guy. But now, but now with chain plying, you only need to use two. That's right. You don't even need to use two. You can wind it off into a ball like I did and you can use one. So that is minimum level bloblins. <laughs> Unless you use a spindle and then you don't need any bloblins. But that's a whole different, whole different ball of wax. Anyway, hit the like button if you like this ridiculous video. <laughs> Most of it wasn't ridiculous, but we went downhill at the end there. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button if you like these kind of shenanigans, and if you have any thoughts or feelings, leave them in the comment section below. I used a Spin Illusion Queen Bee wheel. I recommend these above all wheels, any Spin Illusion wheel. If you're interested in that, hit the uh, Spin Illusion Queen Bee link in the comments down below. And if you are into these videos, you want to see more of them, you want to support me and my family, go to the Patreon, have the Vibes music only, no intro, no outro version of this video available there for patrons. So yeah, pay my bills, get cool vibes, no real downside. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye!